There are three theological virtues and four cardinal virtues. Can anyone tell me what the three theological virtues? I will take a hand. The three theological virtues. Yes, Tyler. Faith, hope, and charity. Tyler Hobbs, that is correct. Thank you. Good. Our seniors setting a good example here for the rest of the school. I like it. And the getting more difficult, the cardinal virtues. There were three theological virtues, and now there are four cardinal virtues. Do we have a hand? You're pointing at someone else. Oh, the choir over here. Oh, Patrick. Yes. The four moral virtues are prudence, fortitude, temperance, and justice. Yes. Prudence, fortitude, and temperance. Thank you, Tyler, for the correct answer on the first one and for pointing me in the right direction for the second answer. Yes, Patrick, that's correct. And he also said there are moral virtues. That's another name for the cardinal virtues, is the moral virtues. So prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. I'm going to give you a very brief definition of each, and then I want to talk about one of them in particular. So prudence, also called wisdom, or the Greek word Sophia. So if your name is Sophia, it means wisdom. Oh, I see a Sophia over there. Okay. I warned her. I, I saw her before Mass. I told her I'm going to mention your name at Mass. So, prudence or wisdom or Sophia is the ability to discern the appropriate course of action to be taken in a given situation. All right, because the morality of an act, the goodness or lack of goodness of an act, will depend on the circumstances. So. I'm going to make a wise, making wise decisions based on this particular circumstance that I find myself in. And the prudent person always seeks to make those wisest decisions of those particular circumstances that he's in. And he's prudent and he's wise because he knows his circumstances, his circumstances are always changing. It's like those uh, movies, like martial arts movies and uh, the protagonist, the martial artist who always wins, he always has this great awareness of his surroundings and he sees this chair that he can flip up on or throw at somebody. Or he's, he's always finding the things around him that he can use to defend himself or to, to win the fight. So the wise or the prudent person is always aware of his surroundings, of the circumstances to make the wisest decision. So that's prudence. Justice, you could also call justice fairness, being fair. Justice is the virtue where we give to each one what is his due. For example, speaking well about others, as we've talked about the last two Wednesdays, we don't want to backbite, we don't want to gossip, because each one is due his right to a good reputation. So we're living out the cardinal virtue of justice when we speak well of others. Or if we know something about others that would not that would harm their reputation. Unless there's an absolute need to say it, we, we don't talk about it. Okay, so that's justice, fairness, giving each one what is his due. And fortitude. Fortitude is also simply called courage, or forbearance, or strength. It's the ability to confront fear. It's doing the good in a difficult situation. And then temperance. You could also call restraint, uh, the practice of self-control. Okay? The temperate person doesn't eat too much or too little, but has a, a good balance in life. So I want to talk about this third virtue, that of fortitude, strength, or courage. Again, fortitude gives us the strength to do what is right in the face of difficulty. Because when there's no difficulty, it's easy to do the right thing. But fortitude enables us to do the right thing when it's difficult, when there's peer pressure, when the rest of the crowd is saying go one way, but you know the right way is going against what everybody else is saying. That takes fortitude. That takes strength. Because you're not going to be popular. 
going to be ridiculed. But you know what the right thing to do is. We all know that the, the right decision in life is usually the hard one. There's one high school that captures that truth in its motto, do the hard right instead of the easy wrong. We know that life is full of inevitable disappointments. Inevitable, you know what that word means? Unavoidable. There's going to be disappointments in life. They're going to come. We can't avoid them. They're inevitable. But this is exactly where true character is developed. True character is developed much more through our sufferings than through our successes. Most sports teams learn a lot more how to improve through their losses than they do through their victories. And the really good sports team, even after they win, they'll, they'll, they'll look, yes, they'll recognize what they did good, but they'll focus uh, also on what they did wrong so they can continue to improve. Setbacks make us stronger. We don't fall into feeling sorry for ourselves uh, and become disappointed or despair. This ties into the age-old question. We've all heard it before. The question is, why do bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen to good people? Well, this question makes a couple of questionable assumptions. First of all, who's to say we are good people, perfectly good people? Even Christ himself, the perfect man, said no one is good but God alone. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the question maybe should not be, why do bad things happen to good people? Maybe the question should be, why do good things happen to bad people? That is, why do good things happen to any of us? Let's go to the story of Cinderella for a minute. Okay, let's go think about the movie Cinderella. Think about the fairy godmother, and she tells Cinderella that she can wear her magic gown until midnight. But the question should not be, why not after midnight? But rather the question should be, why did she have the blessing and the privilege of wearing the dress at all in the first place? The best people are the ones who are most reluctant to call themselves good people. Sinners think they're saints, but saints know that they are sinners. Tomorrow we're celebrating the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Most everyone knows who St. Francis of Assisi is. There are many saints that maybe just Catholics know about or just Christians know about. St. Francis is a saint that everyone in the world knows about and reveres and respects. And even St. Francis of Assisi said, if it was not for the grace of God, I would be the worst of sinners. And again, the best man who ever lived said, no one is good but God alone. So going back to this question, why do bad things happen to good people? Number one, who really is good except God alone? And what about all the good things that happen to us, even though we are sinners? Second, bad things happening to people. Who's to say that suffering is all bad? Life without it, life without suffering, would produce spoiled brats and tyrants and not joyful saints. Again, life is full of inevitable disappointments. 
but our true character is developed through our sufferings rather than our successes. That's what makes us stronger. There's a rabbi named Rabbi Abraham Eichel who said, the man who has not suffered, what could he possibly know anyway? Think of the most courageous person you know. Someone that you admire. Maybe it's someone you know living today. Maybe it's someone from history. And if you had the opportunity to sit down with this person, I am sure you would find that they suffered much in their life. And so suffering, although not good in and of itself, works for the greater good. Because it purifies us, it refines us. We have selfish desires, and suffering purifies our unruly desires. We wouldn't have all the most heroic people that we have in the world are people that would have been purified by that fire of suffering. So when we suffer, let us offer, when we're given a cross from Jesus as we celebrate this Mass of, of the cross of Jesus Christ, let us remember that suffering produces courage. It helps strengthen within us that virtue of fortitude. So when we suffer, we remember the words of sacred scripture that all things work together for the good of those who love God.